Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of Heart of the Cast. I'm Farfa, as always. Your co-host is... <laughs> Siri. That's me, that's Josh. Oh, my oh, fault. Okay. No, it's Siri. Okay, yeah. My fault. Like, like, I was just looking at today's topic. My fault. Go I'm ahead, third Josh. wheeling today. Hello. All right, yeah, the world champ has taken a bit of a backseat here because we have a real champion <laughs> here. The champion of the Wheel of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, woo! Woo! That's where you're most famous from. At least for, like, us Yu-Gi-Oh players. Um... Yeah, we don't really have much of a, a topic per se, but you were just really heavily requested. So I guess we would just get you on to just shoot the shit and talk about this amazing, uh, fantastic game and content creation as well, I suppose, in the process. So that's uh, yeah. what we're doing today. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like, do you have a specific question or because I know later, I don't know if this is spoiler alert, but like we're going to get into something else later in this, correct? uh what well, do you have something planned because no you you told me we're gonna like do some like guess the 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 thing or whatever yeah, that like, was a different call like that you ghosted me on don't worry this is <laughs> this is collab 2.0 ah i love oh. planning that went into this episode <laughs> oh my fault man no no no. that's his fault that's actually his fault oh okay. no nah, it, it's actually not i think i think um i think continue <laughs> all right <laughs> Well, um, can you capitalize yeah. the R in my name, bro? I don't, I don't like how it's like lowercase like that. It's like C and then C B X, you know, like C reacts is how it should be. You know what I'm saying? Like, appreciate. So, it. is that because like you originally started <laughs> as one of those like reaction uh, channels? No, no, no. That's just how it is. It's just, uh, it's kind of like two it's different words. Yeah, yeah. It's just important to me. You know what well, I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't look point, right. I suppose is where did you come from and where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? How did the uh, whole content creation thing start like where i because i you posted like a reel after you hit a million subs which by the way congrats belated congrats that was uh, thank you that's, that's incredible. appreciate it thank you um, sir um yeah content creation it's always interesting because like i'll get asked in my day-to-day -day life like oh somebody will be interested in doing content creation themselves and they'll be like oh how did you start um but they're immediately going into it with like the mind frame of oh, I want to make a job off of, you know, being a content creator. And what I always tell people is, dude, I started making YouTube videos for fun when I was like, YouTube came out in 2005. I want to say I posted my first YouTube video in like 2006. Is this still and, out there? Uh, maybe it'd be hard to track down, but like, it was just like AMVs. Like, that's how I started. I, and that's how I, like, if you don't know what an AMV is, people at home, it's an anime music video. Very <laughs> cool stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I would take like Dragon Ball clips and like you know throw the Lincoln Park stuff. But like you were uh, that guy. You you were. I was that, that guy. guy. I was wow. that guy when they, just growing up because I was you know I was a kid. Thank and, you for like, creating my childhood, dude. Honestly, it's an honor. Hey hey, no problem, man. I'm just you know creating one good soldier at a time. But what nevertheless, was your first one? Uh, I don't I don't remember. But but I did it for so long. I actually do have an AMV channel that's still up. And uh, I started that one. It was like my second AMV channel. I don't know what happened to the first one, but my second one I started in like 2011. Um, and again, I never got paid a dime for making AMVs. And some of them are really successful. Like they're still up. The channel is, it's not really a crazy plug because like I don't, I'm not posting on that channel anymore. But Siri X AMVs. <laughs> no, X, it, no, it's, it's much more 2007 username than that. X Elite Vegeta X. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was the username, bro. That was the username. Oh, no. He's even got yeah, the X bro. in there. It's missing yeah, numbers. You, gotta, you got both numbers. X's, bro. You got both <laughs> X's. But, like, there's videos that actually were really successful, like millions of views, and, like, and I was pretty good at it. Like, it obviously, early on, it was stupid, but is I bring that up to, to say <laughs> there like is an art to it. It isn't it's just, like, like play, and that's it, right? If like, you see it, I think you'd be surprised. It's copyright music, so you can't, you know, pull it up right now, but I, I would welcome anyone to look into it because okay. I, I was kind of that guy i was kind of that guy when it came to the amv worlds uh mm -hmm. but i bring that up to say i was creating for fun anyway whereas a lot of people are going into it and then immediately like oh i want to make this into a career it wasn't until like 2016 ish that i started this channel or started you know posting i made this channel a long time ago but i started posting mm -hmm. in uh 2016 and uh because i you know amvs were doing so well i was like okay i've seen other people kind of like do something with youtube what if i actually tried to you know turn this into something um mm -hmm. and then it was by 2017 that uh it became a full-time job and i was able to quit my day job 
Um, what were you doing? Day job, I'm asking. I, so I, I I did everything. Um, but at that time, I was actually working for 2K Games. I was uh, doing quality assurance for uh, 2K, oh, uh, like cool. you know basketball games and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but prior to that, because God, I, I'm not going to get into too much of the whole life story. But like, I did everything, dude. I was like, I bagged groceries at a grocery store. I pushed cards. I like fucking. You clean bathrooms at a grocery store. The and then, story, like, after... yeah. It's just the origin, like the climbing the rungs of the ladder, you know? It's the, yeah, the exactly. Like I started, like literally started from the bottom. And, mm -hmm. and then I worked at a bank for a little bit, but like that was mind numbing because I've always just had like a, you know, I, I think I believe in like different personality types. Like my personality was always kind of like inclined to be somewhat creative in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. Like I was the kid who was always like doodling on the side of the math papers and stuff like anytime i turned something in it was like a picture or something so like i always needed a creative outlet in some way shape or form but i was also always interested in or what i wanted to do is create video games i'm, I'm making this long story short i'm trying to it's a long ass story but that's why you're you know, here if, like if that's today's what we topic is serious you know, yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying it just but we we don't have anything else planned go, go. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i all um i always had like this inclined to create something and that's what pushed me to work at uh 2k in the first place is because i was actually going to uh college for computer science and the reason why was it was with the goal to like learn how to create my own video games and like you know bring my own little universe to life and i still kind of have that goal but it's kind of you know taking a backseat to youtube lately obviously but um uh, I ended up dropping out of college because I got to this point where mentally I was like, I can teach myself everything that um, that they're teaching because we have the Internet now. So it, it just kind of like hit me that I could maybe just learn this by myself with the Internet. And then maybe if I get a job in the industry, like, you know, video game industry, I could like learn everything I need to. Um, so that's what led me to 2K. And then I was doing YouTube on the side. And then eventually, you know, YouTube starts doing a little better for me financially than uh, what is your paid content was. at this time? Like, what are you what are you making? Because I you're not going to be making any money on AMVs, right? Because I just assume with all the copyright and stuff like where are you? Um... Oh, at this time? Yeah. No, I, I wasn't making. So again, um, so AMVs, I never made a penny off and still to this yeah. day, it happens. So like that whole channel is just like a AMV channel. And that's mm -hmm. why I made or like I switched over to this channel because it was like, OK, this is the channel where. Yeah, but I, I mean, like your early content, like when you first start like living off of in 2017 and onwards. Oh, at that time, it was um, so it was it was a mix of things. Uh, when I first started uh, on this channel, it was God, so embarrassing. But I mean, it's on the Internet. <laughs> How bad is I, this? Wanted, I, I knew I, I knew it's still on the internet so it's whatever but like i was doing like those stupid ass prank videos where like you oh know, no like, you one of those guys <laughs> regretfully for a short time i was but it wasn't but it's even worse actually like it was dragon ball theme like i i did this dumb video where i was like eating like goku in public and like that unfortunately how do you up. eat like goku in public i gotta watch this i'm gonna I'm don't some no, 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 no no yeah after this yeah go ahead but uh it, it's embarrassing <laughs> and i look like a fucking infant in the video um but yeah i had just moved to las vegas for my uh because that's where i was working for 2k uh mm -hmm. but it was also when i first moved out of like my parents house so i was living in las vegas so it was kind of like the perfect atmosphere to do that type of video um and what we would do is like I would be working my shift at 2K and then either after work or like sometimes even during a lunch break, me and I had a uh, shout out to Matt. He was a coworker of mine at 2K, but he he would record for me in exchange for me buying him lunch like that because I was I didn't have money. So it was like I couldn't like pay him an actual, you know, rate or whatever. So like I was like, yeah, bro, I'll get you lunch. Get you Just lunch. record this for me. You know what I'm saying? So we became good friends through that. Uh, but yeah, he would help me record like these pranks and stuff. But then eventually I, I evolved um, into, you know, more of the gaming sort of sphere. I started making videos on Dragon Ball Xenoverse um, and Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 came out in late 2016. Still posting DLC, by the way, which is insane. Um, DLC? And yeah. Wow. Yeah. Xenoverse 2 still has like an active community and developers posting DLC, which is insane.
after eight years. But um, yeah, that's kind of where things sort of took off. You know, I did some skits here and there too. I I, I kind of tried everything. I was like throwing shit at the wall and whatever stuck. Um, I I did. So uh, yeah. So the the income at that time was just whatever random. I didn't have like a niche yet, other than the fact that I was like I was in the Dragon Ball sphere, mm-hmm. but like it was like gaming skits like random pranks and shit it was a lot of things and then you know doing what you like and seeing what yeah yep yep you ever played yep. dragon ball and josh uh played dragon ball yeah like the old uh, video games and stuff i've played v- the very old video games with friends yeah i never owned one i wasn't much of a of a dragon ball kit like i'm just waiting when the Yu-Gi-Oh comes in that's like that's when that's when Bro, you grew join. up in the 2000s what do you mean no, I've watched Dragon Ball like coming home from school. I'm familiar with like the first one, yeah. But like, yeah, Dragon Ball was huge for me. I was obsessed with the um, what was like the PSP game called? Like one of the first one where you have to like charge up your energy and stuff. That's every that Dragon Ball like game. Every where you have to Dragon Ball game. Yeah, even energy. I know that. Like, wait, that's a, that's the worst <laughs> description. On of PSP, wait, is it? Is I'm it... trying to think what's on PSP. There's Tenkaichi Tag. <laughs> On oh, like what's that one? Uh, what's that one Dragon Tenkaichi. Ball game where they use that that technique? You know the Kamehameha. Like, <laughs> no, no, okay, oh, that wait. one no, was no, crazy. Wait. That one. Was Let me crazy. clarify. So when I say charging up, right, is that like an actual thing you actively do in the games? Because isn't it like a passive yeah. bar? Well, yes and no. So, like, typically in almost every Dragon Ball game, the way it works is when you're fighting, your key meter does. It's called key. Uh, does slowly yeah, yeah, go up. <laughs> But uh, you can also expedite the process by, like, you know, oh, depending on the game, I just, see. like, okay. pressing the charge button, and then it'll, it'll go uh, up. I, and so then... I, li- I literally just asked you which Yu-Gi-Oh! game is the one with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Skull. game? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, That's yeah, basically yeah. what I yeah. just asked. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. What was that Yu-Gi-Oh! game that had Dark Magician in it? Oh, I just can't quite, can't quite put my finger on it. Um, but to segue you know, into Yu-Gi-Oh! Point. The way I got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, is uh, actually through, looks left, looks right, Duel Links. Um, Ooh. Because I was into Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was a kid, uh, I, like every fucking, you know, 90s or early thousands baby, you know, was what into was the, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! origin? Like, what's your first, like, memory of the game before coming into Duel Links? Uh, definitely with the anime. I, I would, like, watch it with my brothers. Um when it would come on and you know we were just super fucking into it like from from the very beginning obviously like and that's kind of why you can see traces of that in my deck building stuff now is like i love the winged dragon of raw for example because like at the time you know when i was watching it he was uh you know merrick with winged dragon of raw was kind of like this you know the ultimate villain of the series you know what i mean and i don't know why Maybe like don't let me get superpowers because for some reason I always align with villains. Like like I think the villains are like really cool, with the exception of Dragon Ball. Like I well Vegeta was a villain, but Vegeta's like my favorite in Dragon Ball. So like I don't know like I don't know like douchebags are kind of like cool to watch sometimes. Deck um, build like Marek as well. Yeah, it, well a little better though. <laughs> um, like I, I've surpassed <laughs> I've surpassed him. All right. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of where I started. And then like the whole neighborhood, I don't know how it was. Uh, you guys are uh, Germany and where are you guys located? I need you to guess where I'm from. I, I, I got to hear this. I don't want to ask where you're from or where you're currently at. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of both technically. I'm not asking. It, it's the same thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was born here. Guess. Okay. <laughs> I don't like this game. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a different country somewhere... every time. <laughs> Somewhere on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. That's pretty close. Yeah, close enough. Mm. You know mm. Scotland, okay. right? Surely. Oh, yeah. You're, you, oh, so you live in Scotland? Yes. I'm not trying to like... Okay, uh, I, I actually have a... Uh, well, he actually recently retired from editing, but shout out to Yako. He was... Uh, I flew him out from Scotland, actually, and that's where he lives. In Wait, we went the, to school uh, together. No way. No, of course not, dude. Shut up. Uh, bro, I actually thought, <laughs> bro, I, I, I don't know. Bro, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I call him Yeah. All right, fuck you. Anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so Yu-Gi-Oh! In, I bring that up to say Yu-Gi-Oh! in the U.S., it was, like, super huge to the point where, like, all the kids in the neighborhood had Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, and, like, it was literally, like, 
IRL. Like it, it felt like an anime when we walked out. Like we all had our decks in our pockets, and like over, you know, during the summertime, we'd go to like either the playground or like someone's house, and we would just like pull out our cards and you know talk shit and definitely not follow the rules, but we thought we were. You know what I mean? Based off of the anime. And, cards did you, uh, you have, know, and what kind of deck did you put it, together? It, if, it, if it was not a cohesive. It was like a pile of cards. Yeah, like, of I, I, you know what I mean. But like, you know, you made you because in the anime, you see like, oh, you can just normal summon blue eyes for free. Like that's just how it is. Or so why would I ever play Legin? So it was like stupid shit like that. So mm. we definitely didn't like play by the rules. What was your it wasn't card? on purpose either. <laughs> Before Wing Dragon of Raw, because like that was the time when you couldn't get the Wing Dragon of Raw. Like it wasn't. I don't think it had come out yet. You could only get like those those the weird colored ones, right? Yeah, exactly. And when I got those, that's when it like triggered for me that like I was like an Egyptian god stand, like just a dick rider. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But prior to that, I think it was the Summon Skull. Actually, I always liked the Arch Fiends and stuff, and I thought Summon Skull was like really sick because it was like. Especially after I learned the rules, I was like, why would I ever play Dark Magician when Summon <laughs> Skull is like one tribute? You know what I mean? It actually pissed me. Bro, it was like, you know when Buzz Lightyear learns he can't fly? That was me when I learned that I couldn't just like summon a card without tribute summoning. I was fucking devastated. <laughs> it was like all my cards were just like beat sticks and it was like, yeah. It's, it's, that is genuinely like every child's like deer in the headlights moment. It's like your world crashes around you when you realize, wait a minute, <laughs> Summon Skull is just better than Dart Magician. Yeah, there's this, actually, like, it's like learning that there's no, uh, no, freaking no Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Dark Magician actually sucks, dude. What? Yeah. Yeah. Until they like gave him, you know, support for 17 years or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Fun fact, and I'm actually just remembering this. I think Toys R Us had a, uh, like Yu Gi Oh tournament that i showed up to with uh like i guess so it was either toys mm. r us it, it was one of those big stores it was either toys r us walmart or like something i don't know i was really yeah. young um i went i'm almost a hundred percent sure for whatever reason they didn't let me play because my deck wasn't like a like a regulation deck i don't know what i did wrong i was, was so young the sleeves, but I or was remember, it the card choices or no, I, I i could not tell you but i just remember being super sad and i watched all these like older like they seemed like grown men to me, but they were probably like teenagers playing <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! And like and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get there someday. And they're probably all also trash at the game. But um <laughs> yeah, I that was like my first and only, I think, tournament experience in Yu-Gi-Oh! because slowly after that I got to that age where Yu-Gi-Oh! was always cool to me, but you know, through growing up, I, I reached this point where I was like, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh!'s not cool anymore. Yeah, no one's playing Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. And, but yeah, like, I always bad, thought it basically. was cool. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you move on to other things and um, my interest, because I was still simultaneously interested in like Dragon Ball, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Like that was the big three, I think, for most kids. Uh, but I think Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball never left because like they were just pumping out game after game after game, uh, like every year it felt like. Uh, but then, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! for whatever reason took a back burner and... I'd be on a huge Yu-Gi-Oh! hiatus, but it would always be cool in my head, but just, like, for the memories, until I think it was, like, 2017-ish when uh, I find out that there's this mobile game where I can just play Yu-Gi-Oh! whenever, because that was the biggest thing. It's like, who do I play Yu-Gi-Oh! with now? Like, I thought about over the years, like, okay, I do want to maybe come back to Yu-Gi-Oh!, but who the hell am I going to play with? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Am I going to, like... If for some reason, I never really knew about local scenes. Um, but yeah, Duel Links was like that, you know, access or gateway back into Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was able to like learn everything. I think at the time that I joined Yu-Gi-Oh!, it was the perfect time. Uh, or Duel Links, it was the perfect time because... Um, was that like the release of Duel Links? Like the very beginning of the Lifespan? And you Yeah, it was shortly after. I remember like they just released the first wave of like, like the very early wave of uh, Six Samurai. So like mm -hmm. not like the good Six Samurai, it was like the very first wave. And that was actually the first deck that i played when i when i came back and there was no they hadn't even released um there was no synchro summoning there was no i think the only it was yeah it was literally was, just I, the og dual monster rules and stuff yeah, like that. It, yeah it, it was yeah. all chronological almost yeah from what, from was, what there, i've heard i didn't play dual links early days um but i've heard that early dual links was actually like pretty fun it was. It was. It was almost like a pseudo. It wasn't goat format, but like it was a pseudo kind of like 
uh very simplified version of Yu-Gi-Oh. So it was like the perfect, yeah. you know, re-entry for somebody who hadn't played in years. You know what I mean? Like yeah. not overwhelming at all. Josh, did you have yeah, the only extra deck was by the way? Uh, I feel yeah, like I, I remember you doing like casually or because I feel like I remember you talk about doing the grind or something at one point or am I just I mean I've ne no I've never done the I've never done the world's grind like actively like super mm. actively were you I like did super into year... did you like do DK tournaments or something yeah I played some of those back in the day Ooh. like I want to say 2016 or 17 around that time what was the format it was there was like I think Cyber Angel was like one of the first best decks right yeah that, that, I, that was really good and then Weevil Burn was really yeah, I do remember. Oh. I definitely do remember playing tournaments in Cyber Angel format. But I also remember, like, I remember playing during the very, very early days where it was still like that dinosaur beat beat stick deck because it was. Yeah, just I remember the, that. Yeah, yeah. Like it was the skill that gave you the field spell, and then you played yep. like a bunch of sixteen hundred van vanillas, and that was literally like the best. And it like deck boosted them up to like nineteen or some shit. Yeah, because like it like automat because it automatically had a Jurassic World, I think, on the yeah, field exactly. like by default yeah. because of the skill, and then. I remember, like, there was the Kaiba beatdown. See, that's the thing. Like, in normal Yu-Gi-Oh!, you say, like, oh, I was playing, you know, uh, Fire King Snake Eye, or I was playing, you know, like, you just the deck. But for Duel Links metas, you say, like, I was playing Weevil Burn, because, like, those skills actually make... <laughs> uh, I was playing Kaiba beatdown, because those skills actually make such a big difference in, uh, mm -hmm. in the deck. So, have Duel you Links seen Duel Links recently? Pretty cool. No, I have not. The music, I, I use the music, though. The music is fucking insane. Oh, that's fair. Like in videos. I don't know if you've read Have any you? of the recent dueling skills, but like they're just like you know, Math Mech Circular. <laughs> like every deck just has that as like a. Oh skill. come on, not today. <laughs> <laughs> um, the game is out of control, powerful. So uh... I bet. I think the last time I played, like I haven't played since Master Duel came out. But yeah, you uh, Duel Links was my gateway drug, and I actually have a very like some very early videos. Uh, of Duel Link, so like I was covering, you know, I started covering it on my channel, um, and that's kind of like what introduced Yu-Gi-Oh to um, my audience uh, to an extent. But obviously, it really picked up when Master Duel came out, and then I, um, you know, had to learn real Yu-Gi-Oh per se. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? And I was real because... quick. What was your like, or, like first like original content with Duel Links? Like, were you doing duels or like profiles or? It was just duels like that's that's kind of like always my vibe for and it's because I kind of come from like a fighting game slash arena fighter background. Mm. So it's kind of like the point of my content or or, or my content just kind of gets to the point like it doesn't you know, I'm not like and I was actually for some reason, even early master duel videos, I was very secretive about my decks. I was like because I hated and I still kind of it, not resentful, but like. For some reason, because I, I grew up in an era of, like, everyone creates their own deck. Everyone has, 100%. like, their own unique flavor to their deck. And, like, yeah. everyone in the anime has their own unique flavor to the deck. So, like, coming off of that, and then, like, I'm on this huge hiatus. So, I don't know how, like, mindsets might have shifted. But now, you know, I come back and everyone's like, oh, me, me want copy and paste deck. Oh, <laughs> me want this copy and paste deck. You know what I mean? And it's just, like, nobody had, like, their own unique sort of, like, flavor to it. So, like, early on, I was like... Uh, this is my deck. Like, make your own variation of it. You know, you can get inspired, but like, like this is mine. Like, you you come up with your own, and it's not even like it was like, like this fucking secret. You know, gonna win mm -hmm. every tournament deck, but like, it's just your deck. It's your unique creation. You know, yeah, yeah. I and I wanted to push the community to like, uh, you know, create their own thing and like explore different options and stuff. Because for me, that's the most fun about Yu Gi Oh to me is like to be able to like create something unique from my head that no one else is playing and like get the shock value of like, holy shit, you're playing that. You know what I mean? And then, you know, there's, and then it's funny because I, I first learned this with Sam. Sam is actually what kind of like, like made me realize that like, I could understand the other perspective a little bit because there was a lot of like, why the fuck are you playing this? Why are you playing this? Your ass. Your ass. But like, it'd be, it'd be the card that beats him. You know what I mean? And it's like, like, bro, my brain just, and, and I'm not saying this in like a, like, oh, like, oh, I'm just that guy kind of way. But like, my brain works in a different way because I think some people with Yu-Gi-Oh, like, it's very just like, like, uh, like cookie cutter mentality of like, this is what a deck should look like. 
And uh, if it doesn't look like this, like, oh, you must be doing something wrong because clearly I looked up the best deck on Yu-Gi-Oh Pro and it has these results in tournaments. So like, uh, like my deck's the best, like, but then I beat it because like, I thought about weird ways that I could like maybe out some of the things that that deck is doing. You know what I'm saying? It's like such a, I think about this all the time and it's like a greater conversation of just the cultural shift of, you know, gaming society where everything is optimization. Yes. Everything is cookie cutter tier lists yep. um and it's just like we just grew up in a different era uh mm -hmm. in that kind of thing right like we used to play video yeah. games purely for the thrill for the fun and now it it really is just for better or for worse um it is all about that min maxing and you play elden ring right i have yes i do yeah. play a little bit i don't know if you noticed that like that it made me realize like that's literally leaked over into and i think it's like internet society especially when you're posting your content because you're going to have like these people coming out of the woodwork like, oh, this guy doesn't even know how to optimize his weapons. <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> and I noticed that leaked over into literally everything. And I kind of wanted to like, like I, I purposely like stray away from that. Like on Elden Ring, bro, I don't have like, I, I purposely am doing or like did a blind playthrough. And what that means is like, I'm not looking up anything. I'm yeah. not taking any outside advice. Like this is literally if in 2007, I bring game home, I put game in and like I play it and you're just watching that experience. Like that's, that's what I wanted that to be. And I want like to get back to that because I think that kind of adds to the adventure of anything you do, whether it be Elden Ring or like building a deck on Yu-Gi-Oh or me not doing an optimal combo in Dragon Ball Fighters, um, like, like stuff like that. Like, I think that's what's fun about it because you're able to like, again, this all ties back to like wanting to express your creativity in some, or my creativity in some way, shape or form. You know what I'm saying? I completely uh, resonate with that. Like I'm, I, I also, I'm doing like a blind playthrough. Like I don't get any help. Um, it's really funny. I posted my, uh, like one of my kills of like fire giant on uh, my alt channel. And the comment section yeah. is like, why is he using a fire weapon against the fire? <laughs> <laughs> which, which obviously is really dumb, but it's like, that's just how I wanted to do it. That I is guess, pretty funny, though. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I completely get it. You fight but fire with fire. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is pretty funny. Josh, do you have any thoughts on like the, um, the min-maxing mentality that's changed since you've been at, you know, from the very beginning, obviously? Uh, I mean, I feel like that's just something that happens as soon as you take something seriously in the sense of like competitive nature, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I, I and I have this as well, where I sometimes enjoy games a lot more that I don't compete in simply because I don't have to do that, right? Like sometimes yeah. I do that thing, right? I take a, I take a new game home, uh, like for example, I don't know, the Zelda games were one of my recent uh, favorite games that I that I played, the the Switch mm -hmm. ones. Yeah, and like yeah, I never, I never like kingdom. went online and checked like, oh, how am I supposed to to do Build this or that? Shit, yeah. You know, just like I just like, I just I did that. Obviously, for Yu Gi Oh, I don't really, I don't have that luxury very often because obviously, when I enter tournaments these days, like I, you know, with the competitive, you're going in with have, like the like I gotta win mentality, and that yeah. that makes sense. It's kind of but similar. I definitely, yeah, Go I definitely ahead. see the appeal of what you're saying, and I try yeah. to do that in other, like in other aspects of my life. I try to get more of that. Whereas for mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh, obviously, I try to keep it competitive, so I gotta like min-max it right and see what everyone else is doing. But I try to not apl uh, apply that to like everything I'm doing because I feel like at that point, like it's just stressing me out. You know, I enjoy it for this one thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a question I also, though. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you, you obviously compete in Yu-Gi-Oh at like the highest level. Um, mm -hmm. So. I'm curious, do you think there is, obviously you'd be going against the grain a little bit because if everyone is entering, not everyone, but you know, 90% of people are entering the tournament already kind of like decided on, oh, this is the best in the meta right now, you know, Snake Eyes, for example, right now, like, mm -hmm. do you think, or do you try to think outside of the box of like, okay, if everyone's playing this, if I can find obviously it doesn't have to be just like countermeasures specifically for snake eye but like mm -hmm. maybe you know that one thing that could maybe you know shock the world like oh this can actually maybe beat this or is it kind of like ah uh, no it's there's enough results in that show that you know snake eyes is that deck and that's mm -hmm. if i'm not playing that i'm selling uh i definitely try 
I, I definitely try to say uh, to do what you said. Uh, and sometimes I feel like it works. Sometimes I feel like it just doesn't work. And then I mm -hmm. give up on it. And very often or like definitely um, regularly, it, it happens where I have a I feel like maybe there is something that could have worked better, but I didn't find it. I feel like a lot of formats go um, something goes overlooked or is underexplored. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that sort of stuff can definitely work. But there's been formats where I felt like that wasn't possible. Um, I've, I, I feel like uh, I've won a YCS with a deck that did that, which was Paleozoics in 2017 mm, yeah. during Zodiac format, where it was like top cuts of YCSs at the time had like, I, I want to say like 70 or 80% Zodiac. Um, okay, and crazy. it was a, a group of, of friends. It was not me alone, but it was a, a group that found a deck that was really good against um zodiacs and i was able to win an entire ycs with i can see it. that, that was... I, I didn't know that it was against zodiac but like i'm putting like one mm -hmm. and two together and i can kind of see why that matchup would because you know canadia flip or or they all paleozoics are unaffected right like yeah. they're all unaffected. Yeah, they were all unaffected and dryden can't pop face down so like the deck didn't put on much pressure on you at all it couldn't deal with at five and it just like like so, it had all the stuff in it like even mirror force and all that in 2017 like it played five mirror forces yeah so you you don't think anything exists like that for i mean it's hard to say because snake eyes is obviously like insane because everything's like a one card combo mm -hmm. feels like diabell star or bonfire or uh ash obviously like everything is crazy in snake eyes so i'm trying to because mm -hmm. because that's me right now like obviously i'm not playing like at you know locals or like an actual like regional tournament ycs's and shit Mm -hmm. I thought about doing it, but like, you know, just in my lowly ventures in Master Duel, and I have reached Master Rank, everybody relax. All right. I'm just kind of that guy. Anyway, um, in Wait, those sorry, ventures. Did you say you haven't or you have? No, I have. I have. Okay. Okay. Um, and go. what I did it with is actually Horus, because mm -hmm. uh, Horus had just come out. And I found Horus to be a pretty, obviously, it's not like, it's not just going to cook Snake Eyes every time, but like, I found it to be a decent matchup if you have, you know, but then, but then again, that's any deck. Like, if I have perfect setup, then me beat yep. deck. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I only ask that because, like, that's kind of my mentality. No matter what the meta is, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not saying the way I'm thinking is correct at all, uh, but for some reason, I've always been like, okay, what rogue strategy can beat the meta right now? Like, what, what, what can I, like, surprise people with? And it yep. usually, like, some... And surprisingly, Winged Dragon of Raw um does okay because uh and obviously the way you you're know, trying to pillows on raw now has... this is yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah, know, this is what it's all leading up to <laughs> no i've 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 rated him i'm gonna shock the world with wing dragon of raw but listen because that little effect that it has built in where like your opponent cannot activate the cards when uh this card is normal summoned like that if you soul crossing like a flambers dragon away flambers dragon doesn't activate in the graveyard uh, <laughs> snake eye temple doesn't activate to bring up like mascarena when you summon it so like there's just like some interesting little um things that you know can happen so i ask that to you from your perspective because you're kind of like usually you know i'm not saying you're always you know playing like the top of the meta but you're more inclined mm -hmm. to than somebody mm -hmm. like me so i'm wondering yeah. from your perspective like if you ever like oh i want to just beat the meta with something unique you know uh i i try to basically like because you, you said it's kind of like a principle of like trying to go against the grain like you think it's always uh, that's just me i'm not saying everyone something. should yeah, yeah, be I like that it, but i was curious if anyone yeah. like if you thought like that at all i i do think i do try to think outside of the box and for some formats i feel like that has a better chance of working or not so what i try mm -hmm. is to never i want to never be either or i never want to be the guy that always plays meta because then i'm going to miss those opportunities where mm. something that people actually don't expect might actually be the call but right. i also don't want to be that guy do, who forces myself into yeah um doing that all the time because sometimes i feel like it's just it's just too hard or it's not going to work and so, it, so it's, your thing it's, is you're going to play what's best for like like it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, you'll mm -hmm. explore those other options whenever a meta yes. comes out. Like, I remember, I think recently, I think it was you who was saying, like, you were attempting, like, a board breaker, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a approach to the meta, and it just mm -hmm. didn't work out. I, I can appreciate that you're at least, that you at least try other things, because I think yeah. the one thing that I don't like, and then, because again, like, I don't care what people really do, but... I just want to know people are actually exploring because there's how much mm -hmm. like 20,000 cards out there, like something crazy like that. Like, 
just explore you know what i mean yeah. it might not work but you know just uh it, it's fun like that because you you know when top eight is all snake eyes or whatever the fuck it was then it's just like okay like it's not really like from a watching perspective it's not even that fun you know what i mean but yeah. that's more of a konami thing at yeah, that point watching, it's less no. of a player thing yeah no i agree and i i try to be open for that it is obviously the most time intensive method out of the three you know it's just like i can always play rogue or i can always play meta what i'm setting myself out to do is i want to always try to find the best solution which obviously includes mm -hmm. having to basically try and test everything out like i need to know what the meta does i need to know which kind of rogue options are available mm -hmm. and uh, i can't always bring up that time like for example we have german nationals next weekend and i don't know i don't want to play snake eye for example i don't i'm looking for other stuff but you at kind the moment, of but you kind of have getting, to uh, yeah yeah so it's it's rough but yeah. uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, I try my best to to be open to those other options. You know, like I'm not yeah. forcing myself to play uh, Rogue decks, but uh, I am trying to be open-minded. You're trying to see because if I, there's something there. I've experienced it firsthand that you the, the deck that everyone is expecting, the deck that everyone thinks is the best, is not always the best choice for any given event. Like that is not right. a given thing that that needs to be the best necessarily because it's obviously also what everyone is expecting and preparing for so right 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 and then you can use that against them so yeah potentially i think everyone kind of has like their um favorite pet deck or style of deck like some people just generically like comboing some people like just sitting on traps kind of thing and then it's about finding mm -hmm. a deck that works really well with your strategy like one right. thing I noticed. And this for is example, something I'm not very good at because I'm very good at talking myself into thinking something is good, even though the reality is I just like it. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah. Which is a trap that I sometimes fall into, and I'll spend too much time on trying to make that work just because I want to think that it's good. See, at and least then, you're uh, aware. Like, like me, I'm I'm just like one of these days, Wing Dragon of Raw is gonna shock the world, <laughs> and it'll be in my hands. But I'm do you think that if Raw I've been was playing the best Wing deck... Dragon of Raw Horus lately, and it's not too bad. I'm not gonna lie, not too bad. <laughs> okay, but I gotta ask though. Do you not think that if Raw ends up being the best deck, do you think you're you will just naturally be like the cool unique inclined not to play like... it? Yeah. It's a great question. For <laughs> yeah, what do you <laughs> <I> do? <laughs> what do you do if Rise meta tomorrow? Because then. <laughs> You gotta overthink your entire personality, right? You See, gotta this, start this, from this is <laughs> that might be the hardest question I've ever received. But <laughs> bro, I think this is this is the dream scenario. This is like what happens. I make raw relevant, make other people want to play it, and then like I retire from play. <laughs> you retire, you just don't <laughs> enter a tournament while it's meant. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you when show them that it's good and it, then you leave. Yes, exactly. Like uh, like I, I put my is this like a PG podcast? All right, let me stop. Like, um <laughs> I say I put my on the table with raw and then I, you know, establish dominance and then, Don't and then publish I just the deck retire list. into the night. You know what I'm saying? Do not publish yeah, never the deck publish list. the deck list. Well, I'd have to though, because <laughs> that's the thing with, because I found that out too. Like when you go to an event, like your deck list is just like public information. So I was like, all right, I guess I can't hide this anymore if I'm going to, you know, do something with it. So yeah, no, Hey, Hey, just don't be shocked. Cause I was so happy. Like when, um, Oh, what was his name? Exodia Jeff, right? Jeff Leonard, the guy. The yeah, he's Exodia the one, one with Exodia. Yeah, yeah, the way like Twitter exploded for Exodia winning and like just like because that that had a ripple effect even beyond the Yu Gi Oh like community. Like there was just mm -hmm. there was you, like an you know IGN why? article or something on it or some crazy thing. Yeah, and, and the reason is because like people like me, I came back obviously because of duelings, but there's like. A bajillion other people who like have like these amazing because Exodia is the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh, so like that is like ingrained in their head in like 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 just nostalgia, you know what I mean? So when they hear that their childhood, you know, hero pretty much just like actually did something on a competitive level at a YCS, like everyone was freaking out. And I I I simply want to do that for the Wing Dragon of Raw. That's all. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. We're going to get that support one of these days. One of these days. Oh, so it needs support. A little bit. Do that. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. It's already but the best deck, but a little bit of support couldn't hurt. I didn't say it's the best deck, <laughs> but I like I just think I could go on like a Cinderella story run where like my hand is just like goaded every time and I'm just like cooking with raw. You know what I'm saying? I get soul you crossing when I need it. I have spear have mode when I need like it. Compete in the in the GCG or is it just master duel for you? Yes, 
Yes, I do. Not not like hard plans, but like I've I've mm-hmm. been like getting the the cards that I have, like the decks that I have in Master Duel in real life, and then obviously the TCG and Master Duel ban lists are a little different. So I'm gonna you know modify ratios accordingly. What's but, your goal though? Mm-hmm. Like, is it just to play raw an event and have a fun time with friends, or do you want to like compete? At first, like... at first, but I know me so. Like, I competed for the first time in a fighting game, Dragon Ball Fighters, like, two Evos ago. Um, and then I've d- I did it two years in a row. I'm not going this year, but I did last year and the year before um, Dragon Ball Fighters Evo. And I definitely went in as, like, you know, because if you don't know, in, like, in fighting games, at least, like, nobody expects the content creator to do well because, like, oh, he's just a content creator. He's not really about that life, you know what I mean, when it comes to, like, fighting games. Um, Baby, so- right, bro. <laughs> But in my head, like, not like I, I knew I was better than they thought I was, but I thought like, but I still thought like I wasn't going to, and I didn't, you know, don't get me wrong. I didn't do fucking amazing, but I did better than really anyone expected me to because like, so the way I, it's probably different in Yu-Gi-Oh, but like there's in fighting games, typically there's pools and then, you know, you have to win in pools, which is like a preliminary tournament and then you make it to like the main tournament uh and then you know from that main tournament you can like go all the way and win the whole thing so the first evo i went to people thought i was like gonna lose first round of pools like you know what i mean like i was just gonna be ass um and going into it in my head i was like oh you know i'm just gonna show up have fun you know just enjoy the vibes say hi to some people like if i win i win if i lose i lose whatever like i didn't really care about winning or losing but and this is gonna transition into Yu-Gi-Oh, I promise. I I end up doing pretty, you know, not as good as I wanted to, but I got to the finals of pools, which is like I won like the first four rounds and then like I get to the finals of my pools and I'm one win away from basically being on like the main, like like the stage and like, you know, on stream and all that shit. Um, but then I lost like that round right before pools. And that was my first experience. And then when I realized that I could like cook a lot of these people, then something like clicked in my head and like Basically, I got that competitive itch. And then I came back the next year. I actually made it out of pools, but then I I lost like that next round. So like I did like slightly better than I did the year prior. And I was gonna go this year, but you know, shit came up, but not gonna get into that. Um, but I bring that up to say I would go into my first Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament kind of like open-minded, like, you know, uh, I'll, I'll have some fun, maybe like, you know, get some ha-has and surprises out of, you know, playing raw and like nobody's expecting it, whatever. But I already know myself the second I lose like something is going to click in my head where it's like oh I could I could do so much better like I could win like I could if Why I don't just, you just take out the, the middle step and just skip that part I should maybe I should yeah. maybe I should maybe I should but I think I think I just because gen- I've never been to like a like actual IRL like TCG sort of event or tournament or whatever so like I kind of want to see what the vibes are a little bit but because if I just show up for the first time and it's just like, I'm going to cook everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> and then like I, but then like I get cooked, then you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm going to go there. I'm going to see what the vibes are and just see if I can like, you know, surprise people. But mm-hmm. I, I, I genuinely think I, I will, because I think when people see my decks, like they think it's just silly until they get cooked by it. And then they're just like, oh, interesting. I think and it's, then they um, think it's a fluke. It's really weird in Yu Gi Oh because there's almost like I want to say like three kind of like main ways to play, and there's like you know just the casual kind of like I just play the cards that I want because I like them, and then there's the hardcore ca- uh, competitive player, but then there's like something in between which is like I'm gonna play the deck I like or the cards I like, but I'm gonna optimize. Yeah. I'm gonna try make that deck good. I'm gonna try. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So those are sort of like the three main pathways and i guess like you know if you i i, I would recommend that you take that last one which is if you yeah do i'm more like, like that i'm not going in with like like don't get me wrong i will never enter any form of competition with the mindset of like oh i'm just gonna lose like no i'm <laughs> gonna i'm gonna do everything that i can because i i like winning <laughs> i do not like losing at all and that comes like that's anything like i'm I'm the guy Bro, you playing basketball. Bro, you not just say that and then also like say like give us like a ten minute explanation of how you play raw. Come on. But but listen, listen. But but I'm <laughs> I'm the third path. I'm the third path. 
I like winning, but I like winning my way. I don't like the idea of winning some other person. Bro, I was raised by Vegeta. Like, if I, I got to do this, like, my own path, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm just copying and pasting deck from someone else, even if I win, like, for me, and, and again, like, I'm not, like, it's just so, I'm, I'm just a weird person, okay? Like, I'm not saying what I'm saying is correct or not, but this is just how my brain works. No, I get if it, I for sure. I 100% resonate with it. Yeah, like, if I, if I win using someone else's idea, or like even if it's just like the general consensus best strategy i don't think i would feel as good maybe I, i'd probably still feel cool you know good like i win but like i'd feel so much better if i won by like creatively you know making something that no one else may have thought of i i legitimately think it's like an inherent issue with um yu yu um and it's I just feel like other card games sometimes allow deck building to be a little bit more fre flexible, whereas in Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. everything is so centralized in one turn. Every card you play in your deck matters. And yeah. so you have to kind of optimize to stand any sort of chance. Um, yeah. And secondary, I feel like a lot of archetypes like build themselves a lot. Um, there isn't a ton of ways to really... Uh, what's the word? Um, give your own flair of something like... Yeah. Snake Eye, for example, it feels like. But then there's those situations. Josh? I think, Josh, you covered it. Um, that situation with Snake Eyes, I think it was in like the finals or something where like it was just hand traps versus hand traps or something. Mm -hmm. Or like one guy had like all hand traps and like not any real way to like, you know, combo or like, you know, get yep. his shit going. Like that, I think, is a flaw in like, obviously, it's rare for that to happen. So I get it. And you need a way, like, if you're going second, like, you need those hand traps to be able to like, stop your opponent from like getting an overly oppressive board but i do think like there could potentially and i don't know but like there could potentially be a flaw in like that that way of thinking if that can happen as well you know what i mean if people are playing fucking you know however many hand traps and it can cause that situation to happen but i don't know what you think about that you're thinking like playing a deck that loses to hand traps is like not ideal or what do you mean not not just that i think i think it maybe is a little bit of that, but it's also just the uh, mentality because the guy who was playing all those hand traps like couldn't really play the game himself. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, yeah. like, like, is that a flawed thinking? Just like playing all these hand traps? Like, obviously, some are important, but yeah. And I, I mean, don't know. I'm just thinking out loud right at this point. It's definitely that people are playing decks right now that have their own unique set of flaws. It just feels like to to us, at least from the competitive standpoint, it feels like we're forced to do that. Because that's yeah. like what Snake Eyes does. Because like the 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 thing with Snake Eyes is that it's like it creates so much card advantage from just one card. Yeah, so that... it's a bunch of hand traps and then one card combos. Like, yeah, that's the and whole so thing. it it feels like the best way to to beat Snake Eyes is to just not let them play because if you let them play, you just have way too much shit you have to deal with. Right. Which like like the for example, if you compare something like an Infinite Impermanence to like another card that you could have in that situation. Like, mm -hmm. if you let that Snake Eye Ash go through, that Snake Eye Ash gives them, like, 10 cards in the long run or whatever. Like, so it's like mathematics at that point, yeah. A little bit, but it's also just, like, a matter of uh, the, the Snake Eye deck forces people to play a deck and accept a game like that. Because no one wants to play that game where, like, everyone play, just chucks three hand traps at each other and can't actually play mm -hmm. until someone can and just wins. But, See, uh, and that's that's why I like Wing Dragon of Raw, bro. Because hear me out, like <laughs> I've, you you let them play, but little did they know I'm gonna soul crossing all their board away. There's no Barone anymore. There's no Savage anymore. Like I don't know what that guys, does. You know what I'm saying? It, I'm hearing I, you out. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> soul, soul crossing is the spell card that allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters for an Egyptian god card. So if I'm okay. tributing Flamberge and like all these you know fire monsters away for a Wing Dragon of Raw then wing dragon of raw when summoned lambers doesn't activate uh so field spell doesn't crazy. activate you know what i'm saying but but again the only issue is the only issue is and this is why i said like maybe just a pinch of support there's no way to search soul crossing so you literally oh. just have to luck in to have soul crossing in your hand and soul crossing for some reason and it pisses me off to my fucking core of my existence soul crossing has like the biggest drawback that i think i may have seen on any card ever and that drawback is, if you didn't know, I think some people in chat probably know. Is it send it, it or something at the end of the turn? No, no. It, arguably even worse. You can only activate one more card effect for the rest, for that turn, 
and then also the next turn after you've activated soul crossing Wait, other what? than a divine beast monster okay so for example <laughs> i play soul crossing i tribute your field to bring out Ra. ideally i just win right there anyway it's worse but, than i remember but like let's say i had a called by that i wanted to use I could use that, but then I can't use anything else. I can't activate any other card effects, period, other than a Divine Beast effect, which is, which pisses me off. It it's makes really me frustrating so, because- And it lingers you... into the next turn. The next turn, <laughs> the next turn, you can, because Soul Crossing is a quick play. So the one positive of Soul Crossing, or like a positive, is like, I could, you know, my opponent setting up their board, I have Soul Crossing face down, and then they have three monsters. I know they're about to like exceed summit, whatever. I could flip over Soul Crossing, tribute all their monsters, bring out whatever, and then like it could be sphere mode. It's a decent interruption in that respect. But the next turn also says you can only use one card effect like for, for that whole turn. So that means my next turn is essentially dead unless I can just beat you with an Egyptian God card. Like it's uh and, and that, that pisses me off. That pisses it's me legitimately off. They, they gotta the... rot it, <laughs> fix it. <laughs> I think it's I think it's like uh, <laughs> my personal like most frustrating things about like a lot of rogue um, not really rogue but like anime deck specifically it's like they design them to be weak which is really odd because yeah I would I think feel like, like did you think that card would be too good otherwise you know what I mean like and even like, if it's not I think it, like even if it is even if it is too powerful it's like do you not want your it's anime a god decks? card deck it should be yeah like it, it, yeah. I, I don't know how you feel about this Josh even, but right? it seems like. If the meta was Blue Eyes, which won a, a Worlds 2016, I yep. still think that's one of the most iconic Worlds wins ever. Like, do yeah. they not want Dark Magician to be a meta deck? Like, look at Pokemon. Yeah, Charizard do, they want, is... do they not want... That would be good for... It. But again, I do hear it from... Because I don't know what chat's saying exactly right now. But I've seen, like, the perspective of, like, some of, like, the, you know, upper echelon competitive players, you know, saying things like, Ah, uh, here we go with this uh, dual monsters fucking, you know, support shit. And you know what I mean? Like shoving this down our throat. Like some people. Okay. Are, do you know what the issue it, is though? It's it because they like shove all of this. of that as well. But the thing is they put all of the support down our throat and it's like underwhelming. It doesn't do anything. It's like, yeah, it's, yeah, I think yeah. that's just, I think that's just where we're expecting it. Like we have, we've been trained to expect not nothing good out of that. Like for me I personally, see. at least I, I think it's, I, I like, to be honest, I don't really care what's what's on these cards that I'm playing. Like I, I'm playing this game like just for the competitive. Holy. Like for me, these cards could all be blank. Blasphemous, Josh. I do appreciate like cool artworks, but like I don't really care if it's stuff from the anime, if it's a completely Josh, made Josh, I have a question archetype. for you. Like, no, you that, that's an interesting mentality, and uh, I think a lot of people think like you, so it's it, Josh, it is interesting. I got a question for you. The mm -hmm. all of your runic cards, see if the artwork yeah. was just like white boxes, would you still play? Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy what, what 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 if like what if uh they were like runic spell one runic spell two? Bro, i would have oh, played the, the i would have played that bald hugan <laughs> by the Not way even bald I, hugan. I, I i i have been wanting to say this for a while and now that i have josh on call fuck runic i hate runic runic is the worst goddamn thing that i've ever seen but i hate bro that is the deck that pisses me off more than any other deck that I run into is Runic. Because the thing I hate about Runic is the fact that, like, bro, it, it's just, like, blind banish cards off top of deck. I hope I hit it's something so good. It's so bad. Like, bro, it's so... That is so, not at all what it's about. That, it's so annoying. That's what it feels like. That's, uh, do you play, like, Runic combo? I know you play, like, different variations of Runic, but Runic yeah. at its core of just, like, from what I've run into, I know there's, like, Runic combo and you can, like, go into some you know other you know uh, annoying shit Ugh. but i hate just the premise of like oh i hope i hit your most important and maybe it's just mainly for me because i'm playing decks where it's like a bunch right, of one i was playing stuff, yeah. one wing dragon of raw this deck, <laughs> no it's gone cool love that but i don't want to play two either so maybe that's on me but um i mean i feel like if anyone should have hater. a problem with that it's like because like uh it, it only hurts if they banish good cards right Nah. <laughs> yeah but then but then it's like a coin toss like and, and i think and i get it it's a card game so like in some way shape or form it's based off of like the luck of what's on the top of your deck or the unluck of what's on the top of your deck so i see it from that perspective but also also i'm just a hater and i hate that field spell and i, I just yeah. uh, i hate the way that it walks the way that it talks i hate the way that it dressed like <laughs> yeah yeah that's just me 
All right, let's I, get back to good takes. What I was going to say <laughs> was... Um, <laughs> what I was going to say was, I think it'd be smart. Like, I personally don't care if it's anime support or not. I think it'd be smart for them to make anime support, like, meta-relevant. Because I think people would... Like, I, I think it's a win-win. Like, we don't care. The competitive, like, tryhards, we don't care which kind of archetype it is, as long as it plays in a cool way and is, like... Right, like well designed, right? And then for the for other people, it's like the people that it matters for. I feel like there's more people that would find it cool than people that would find it cringe or whatever. Like, do you think Exodia is going to be interesting at all coming no. up with the uh, Infinite Forbidden? You can't. I think the the one where they nailed it the most is probably U Bell because that's looking like it's going to be meta relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually Super something Poly that is. I, I also for. hate Super Poly. Well, that's fair that card. That card is so annoying. I think. Um, but, uh, you know, going back to like the discussion on uh, creativity, um, I just I I wanna like maybe put it out there that I think like Yu-Gi-Oh inherently just doesn't encourage a lot of creativity. Um, I think just... they're trying to though. I just think they don't know how to. It, 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 at least from my perspective, and if you have a different opinion, but like it, it to me, it feels like they're making these things to kind of like. I don't know because like but then there's also the uh i don't want to say conspiracy theories but like there's people who are like oh like they're they're purposely making like this new best deck that you know forces people to get the best deck stuff and then uh you know in order to be competitive but then like at the same time i feel like there, there's such a variety it's hard to say that when there's like twenty thousand plus cards or whatever there is um that they're not you know they don't want people to be creative you know I don't know though. I, I basically I can see it on both sides. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I think there is creativity. I think I think what you're probably referring to, or and what I would agree with, is that a lot of archetypes have a large portion of the deck that that basically builds themselves or itself, simply mm -hmm. because these days, which is something that you'd hope they they'd even be more careful with, but they are trying to be careful with restrictions. I feel like. Because it's been shown a lot that, you know, if you make archetypes that are too open in terms of the restrictions, like, they immediately become a problem. Like, a lot of the archetypes from recent years that haven't had any restrictions on them, like Tier Limits or Snake Eyes or whatever, like, they become problems almost instantly. Because, obviously, also the cards are very strong, but it's also because they don't put any restrictions on what you can do for, like, the rest of the turn, what yeah. kind of effects you can activate, what you can summon from the extra unless deck, you Unless they're making Soul Crossing. Soul Crossing will, will yeah, prevent that, a lot of shit. But, be but not Team Limits, not Snake Eye, sure. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, but if they didn't put restrictions on that. Soul Crossing, you wouldn't like it, would you? If they put... No, they did put restrictions on Soul Crossing. No, that, that's what I mean. If they made Ra good, you wouldn't like it, though. Oh. Well, well again, it's, it's, it's like a happy balance. I just need it to be... <laughs> And, and and I don't know until until I like actually go out there and see what I can do with it. I don't know, but um, which in by my the way, head, it sounds like you're prepping to go to like a YCS or something. Do you don't want to like start at like the local scene or something first? I mean, I I, I will. I have a locals actually. I I am gonna start there. Um, oh, okay. You know, just see how I do. Um, but yeah, bro. Like if raw again, you're that's that's the tough question. But I did want to <laughs> bring this up. I heard uh, Jesse say um. I think he was reviewing Infinite Forbidden and he was talking about mm -hmm. like the uh, Exodia stuff coming up because we were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, anime decks should be relevant in some way, shape or form because, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably good for the ecosystem of, you know, viewers and stuff like that. It brings people back. But what broke my heart, what broke my achy breaky heart is I heard him saying like, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably play a variation of this that has none of the Exodia pieces because they're five bricks. And I was like, Ugh. <laughs> You're probably I mean, right. True, it's, it's you're probably right mathematically, but like yeah. that hurts me so much because I <laughs> wanted my boy to be good, but he's just still he's still ass. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that came, like, bro, that that's came what from scares somewhere. me. That's what scares me. If they add a bunch of like support for Egyptian god cards, and then like all of a sudden, like, oh now I have to play this retrained version of Winged Dragon of Raw. The other one is ass, then I'll be like, fuck, like, damn it. I need it like <laughs> Like, like, that's what I'm scared of. Like, imagine we get to a world where, like, to play Dark Magician optimally, do not use vanilla Dark Magician. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's... No. Exodia is a different case, I guess, because you have to... Like, it's five, so it makes a little more sense. But, like, then you don't get the uh, alt-win condition, which, you know, should kind of 
not be the point, but I don't know. I feel like I you know to... most about this, Josh, yeah. but like in mm -hmm. Pokemon, um, like do they not just literally just redesign Charizard, et cetera, et cetera, like every set or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, like but well, it's different, right? Because that, it's no? not a they're not going off of a card. It's always like Pokemon cards are always new, like imaginations of the the thing from the game, right? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. guess. But I will say, I think, I think what you're talking about, I think they have gotten better at it recently when it comes to Yu Gi Oh. Like, I think if you look at legacy support for like these old archetypes that has come out in recent years, obviously there's probably like examples. Bell's the big one. Yeah, but like even the ones that didn't end up being super meta relevant, I feel like they've made them at least like cohesive strategies. Like I'm thinking of like that shining sarcophagus theme or whatever that they released yeah. in Legacy of Destruction as well. Like obviously that's not a top meta threat or anything, and it's not comparable to what Ubel is about to do. But it was but like good it's enough. Still to a top functioning region. engine. Yeah, it, it topped yeah. the regional, and it's like you look at some of these older archetypes and some of support that they've done in the past. Like the only anime decks like real iconic anime decks that I felt like were ever playable were like Dark Magician, Blue Eyes, and Heroes. I don't know if mm -hmm. there's anything else that comes to mind so far. Um, yeah. But like a lot of this stuff from the I'm recent gonna be years... on Heroes. I think I hate modern heroes too, but continue. <laughs> yeah. I'm just... Yeah, don't say Blackwing. Like, Blackwing black sucks. We don't talk about Blackwings. <laughs> Uh, Wait, is cards what, are what's the Blackwing deal with you? Did you lose to it at one round of a YCS or something? No. black. It's just birds are always bad for this game. For some reason. Okay. All right. Birds are always hating. cringe. Not a Samorg fan, huh? And Hugin is not a bird, chat. Oh. Uh... Okay, it's like I've, a fairy uh, or some shit. <laughs> just uh, FYI, the uh, Runic video is finally tomorrow. And um, obviously, I had to do some Norse mythology. Uh... Uh, research and I can confirm to you, Josh Munin and Hugin are definitely uh, crows. So, I don't talk to me like that. <laughs> I actually just recently found out that in the lore of uh, in, in I, this may have been like common knowledge, but like I just found out that I guess like the runic in uh, generator shit are like in the same universe, like lore wise. Yes. Mm -hmm, and I yeah. think lore wise, uh, and this is a completely, completely different topic, but like you guys saw like the animation for the card chronicles thing, right? Mm -hmm. um where it like showed all the archetypes kind of like as you know in their universe respectively i think yeah. i think the next Yu-Gi-Oh anime should be something like along those lines like uh instead 100%. of like oh main character is playing cards like instead like let's let's have a whole series on you know the albash shit or a whole series yeah. on um you know that's a cold it, take here, it. bro. Like we've been begging, begging for years. Yeah, I didn't, say, on I didn't say it was. A, I didn't say it was a hot take. I yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just. No, like, that's a. That is a. That is a. The, yeah, it's a. It, it's that's a. It's definitely a take that like everyone on the planet agrees on. So yeah, and they they yeah. they should like I'm a, I'm I'm gonna try to get in the right person's ear like bro, yeah. you guys because they just announced I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean I don't know anything, but uh. They announced that not only with that Card Chronicles thing, like, did they show, like, you know, it was cool animation, but that was their first display of Konami animation. Like, there wasn't a Konami animation before, so, like, maybe that leads into something, and I, I think like that'd be The fact dope. that I they mean, founded that thing, you know. People uh, tell mm -hmm. me I'm coping all the time, but, like, you don't create an entire company and studio. You don't create a whole animation studio without, yeah. like, a bigger goal in mind. No, I yeah. mean, exactly. we are coping, though, but we're coping together. Like, we're all coping on the same thing. I, like, it's I, not I don't long. think it's cope. I think it's, I think it's, it's more cope to say, like, they made an entire new company and studio just to make a trailer once. Like, what do you mean? Like, there's a... I mean, coping does not mean it doesn't happen. We're getting we're getting a we're getting a Netflix like full series soon like I believe. Oh yeah, like I yeah, hope. it's like arcane. I yeah. hope and I hope it's not ass. <laughs> I feel like it's that, so hard to go twist. wrong. Imagine that fucking twist. They they make this shit everyone's hype and then like by the end of the first episode you're like, mm, okay. And <laughs> 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 this didn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, uh, back to the. I mean, I'm not going back to the original question, but yeah, that's kind of uh, the long-winded, you know, me get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! And now me interested in Yu-Gi-Oh! And now I've gotten all the way to the point where I'm thinking about, you know, doing the uh, in-real-life, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! shit. Because that's another thing that pisses... Bro, the same Everything naysayers who are like, 
the same naysayers who were like, ah, oh, if you competed in Dragon Ball Fighters locally, you wouldn't be able to do this because, like, you know, oh, you're just an online warrior. Prove them wrong. And now it's like a Master Duel. Okay, but if you didn't have, like, shiny buttons, like, what would you, you know what I'm saying? Like, Master Duel, I see it as, like, <laughs> that's the step before TCG. You know what I mean? Master mm -hmm. Duel it will, like, because I'll, I'll give it credit. Like, I again, like, my first form or my first introduction into playing real modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Obviously, like, I literally took the stepping stone of Duel Links, and I didn't even mention, like, what we did. We touched on it. Since Duel Links didn't have any of those alternative extra deck summons outside of, like, polymerization at first, like, when they introduced Synchro Summoning, like, that was my first introduction. So I was basically mm -hmm. able to digest it because I know, yeah. like, the new Yu-Gi-Oh! player problem is a real thing, but, like, I kind of got lucky because I caught Duel Links before Synchro Summoning, and then they added it. So I was able to learn it yeah, you as got it the, came out. You got the step-by-step -step over, like, a exactly. couple of years. Exactly. And then they add like, you know, exceed summoning. And then basically they add everything. The one thing I didn't learn was link summoning, which I learned when I first got to Master Duel. And I think like even my early Master Duel videos, like I would like eye roll at link summoning just because I didn't understand it. But like it's funny <laughs> because now <laughs> it's funny because now it's like one of my like I, I think I like link summoning. It's probably my second favorite uh extra deck summon outside of uh i like exceed summoning as well um yeah, your so number one favorite don't listen summoning... don't listen don't listen to what i, I said farfa don't listen to him because farfa hates link summoning oh, oh no I, I, was, bro. I was i was gonna suggest uh it don't grew forget, on me your number one favorite is is the tribute summon that's the uh that's the og uh, nah, i'm not a fan that that's what traumatized me bro like I'm. what I'm do you mean that's how you summon raw no well, but he learned that he oh, needed to tribute. That's different. That's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying, like, but, but, but you, oh, the you know, learning process. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can't play my level <laughs> fives and sixes without having tribute to work summons. Shouldn't exist. I wouldn't say all that. That would just kill a bunch <laughs> of. That would be interesting. It would like Master Duel has actually been doing good at um making events actually like semi interesting in terms of like these weird little nuzlocke challenges they kind of spin on it. I love um, it. Yeah. Like, if they did something, like, what do you think would be the best deck if there was, like, if you didn't have to tribute summon anything? If you could just, like, anything that would be a normal, like, you could, that you could normal summon, you could just normal summon it. Like, I wonder, that's interesting. Snake Eyes. He's, he's waiting to say it. Still yeah. Snake Eyes, you think? <laughs> Dude, I, I jo Josh, I gotta Maybe. ask you this, uh, I this question, right? I could just normal summon End of Anubis, though. Like, without <laughs> okay. tributing anything. You know what I'm saying? All like, right. you can't do anything in the graveyard. Yo, Josh, I have to ask you this, right? Um... From a competitive standpoint, how much yeah. attack points does a level four vanilla need to be like, like you would play in your deck? Uh, level eight thousand vanilla, eight yeah. thousand at least. I think maybe it's more. <laughs> mm. Like right now, actually, right now, let me think. I think eight thousand eight hundred. Because that that way, if you Valor a Snake Eye Ash, you just summon it and you win. <laughs> <laughs> what if they have Temple? <laughs> and then you're fucked. <laughs> Oh no! Genuinely, I I think it's a. It, I thought it is you were like, trolling when you said eight thousand, but like that is a gen like yeah. No, genuinely, think about it. that's what it needs. Like that's no, that crazy. it needs to be more than eight. I think it's it's no like, cap. Eight thousand already only kills on a completely open board. Like I, I think yeah. that card needs to be like that card like needs 10, to be 000. like yeah. That's crazy. Which is where like the game is, right? Like you, you need like we were talking about how that is crazy um, to put in. That's a great question because like that really just put shit into perspective for me. Like how yeah. far we've come from Legin. Like that's fucking crazy. Because we had Legin, and then like there was what's like, the biggest huge... level four vanilla? I think it's twenty one. Um, right? Is it? Is there a twenty one? I know there's Megala Smasher, whatever the fuck. That's two thousand. I can't that's think of a twenty one. I think like I think pure normal monster, it might just be twenty one, right? For level four chat. It's funny to think that they've never, like, gone higher than that. Like, they've made a, something, like, 2000 beat stick or whatever in the year, like, 2020 or something. They would be like, can they we should, go higher They should than keep that? going, like, 100 per year until people start being like, wait a minute, what are they doing? Like, well, I don't think they have year, hard caps like on at, something. I, I think their hard cap for level 4 vanillas is 2000, just like how their hard cap for level 8 um, vanilla is 3000 because of blue eyes. I think that... Is there I, no bigger I, that's what it vanilla? Seems like. I don't vanilla. think so. 
I think vanilla is the 2k cap for um, I mean, uh, okay. level four. Power, creep, then... power creep's getting out of wow. control. What are you asking for? A 2100 vanilla? <laughs> it changes everything. It's, it's out of principle at that point. <laughs> All right, so I got to ask, um, you know, obviously, uh, I think most of us here heard of you through uh, Sam. Um, and I don't think you really explained to us, like, where, how that happened or where that came from. Um, that's a good question. So I think uh, I knew of Sam very vague. Like, I didn't really, after Master Duel came out, because, like, like my first uh, couple or my first few Master Duel videos actually like really kind of like popped off. Um, and they were all like me, obvious, like shocker, covering the Egyptian gods in some way, shape or form, because I was coming from Duel Links. And I think I had I don't know if I made a video, but I definitely streamed Duel Links sometimes. And I was playing because, you know, you play as a character. I was playing as Merrick. And then uh, Merrick actually had a built in. His ability was uh, I think it was called. Uh, power of the tributed or some shit basically what it did is it allowed you to um you know ancient chant well if you don't know ancient chant you can banish it from the graveyard and then Ra's base attack is the sum of the monsters that it's that it tributes right. um so merrick had a skill where that was just built in so like if you had raw in your hand you knew you were about to summon it you could like uh activate power of the tributed and then when you summoned raw it would have like and again Duel Links, your life points was only 4,000. So, like, if I... What I would do is so stupid. Like, this shit wouldn't work now. But it, this was an early Duel Links. So, like, I would... I played, like, the Hazy engine. And, like, I would oh get, like, God. you know, the fucking beat sticks out. So, like, basically, Raw would come out with a base attack of, like, 6,000 or whatever without me giving up any life points. And everyone has 4,000 life points. So, like, you know, you break their board and just fucking beat them over the head with Raw. And, uh... <laughs> anyway... So that basically no support was out for Raw other than that. Like we didn't even have Guardian Slime in Duel Links at the time. We didn't have, there was no Ancient Chant. I don't even think Ancient Chant was printed yet. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like what inclined me right when Master Duel came out. I was like, okay, let me see if I can do this in real Yu-Gi-Oh per se, where there's like, you know, five column, five column, 8,000 life mm -hmm. points. And it was obviously harder, but... I had the advantage of like, oh, but there's Guardian Slime now. Oh, there's Egyptian God Slime now. And now, you know, it makes it a little easier to like bring it out and like, you know, cook with it. And uh, anyway, those videos did well. And then I think Sam uh, probably discovered me through those like Master Duel videos. Um, and he just hit me up and said that he wanted to like collaborate and i think like our first collaboration was me i think dino rhyme style uh and sam it was us three and was dotto no dotto was there as well i think yeah so i think it was sam and uh dotto if you don't know dotto dotto doya he the three idiots master duel yeah three idiots uh yeah, I'm familiar. and if you if you're just master duel brain uh like the character duels and stuff like that like that was me and dotto over on his channel um Anyway, yeah, that was our first collaboration. But then after that, he challenged my uh, cubic deck. And I think that was the second. That was the first video we did with just me and him. And he wanted to do like a Kaiba versus cubic thing. And uh, I cooked him. And uh, but people really liked the banter between us early on because like. It was just a lot of shit talk, you know what I mean? Like I am the way I am and he is the way he is. So it kind of just like meshed and i think what sam is really good at like i give him a lot of shit but like what sam is really good at is like he's very in uh in a good way like content brained like he knows he knows like what people want typically from him or like what will you know excite people so and i noticed that early on because he immediately was trying to like get shit in motion when when he noticed like how positive the feedback was between um our two collaboration and he was trying to like get stuff scheduled with me and him and then you know we start doing like the wheel thing early on early on it was just like f tier shit because it was just fun to make jank out of jank or whatever uh and then that evolved into the actual wheel series and then it just kind of like i guess took off from there and now did like ever, did he ever almost tell all you my uh, presence where, where that came from which one the wheel yeah 
He didn't, but I found out later. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did not tell Wait, me, but I did find out later. I got replaced, dude. I got replaced. <laughs> oh, were Damn, you two bro. doing that together? Yeah. I can't. Bro, we did like, like a whole uh, bunch of stuff together, and then uh, Siri X is just handsomer, right? <laughs> bro, you're like, uh, you're like, you're, he's like Andy, and you're like Woody, and then I was like the Buzz Lightyear. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no. starts replacing all of his cowboy shit with the Space Ranger shit. <laughs> oh no! I, I but it's funny because I didn't know that until like way late. Like I'm talking like maybe like four months ago. Like I found out that you were. The, you were no, the I, don't, I, I generally. I didn't, uh, well, I didn't I, know because, like, like so. All I'm trying to say is, your beef is with him, not me, bro. Like that, that, that was him. That was his fault. No, it's definitely a uh, really cool. Um, I'm really happy. You guys have like an amazing dynamic for it and stuff. Me and Sam are like, I think a little too competitive for, for it, perhaps. Um, oh, we're competitive. We like our shit gets toxic sometimes, <laughs> and and I think that adds to the 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 appeal is because like. Like we're we're, we're kind of like you know shooting the shit, talking shit, whatever. But like, there's also this layer of like both of us really want to win, like mm. like like really fucking want to win, and that's what obviously sometimes is jokes. But there has been times where like he's genuinely like I can hear it in his voice. He's like genuinely tight about something, and then I'm just fucking laughing. But oh, then I could, you know, yeah. but then there's times that you no, know, I'll admit like I'm just like. Mm interesting that you would uh you know do this bullshit right here i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna play it off right now but i'm also pissed you know what i mean like so it it's fun because people i think it's not like that all i think if it was like that all the time it's just toxic but like there is a layer of like they both actually they as in us like we both actually really want to win so but it's still it's fun at the same time banter. yeah it's it's like yeah yeah yeah, exactly. And I think that's that's what makes it fun. And uh and he's good at like he and I want you to know this too. So chat, I'm gonna out myself here. Um I'm not the best when it comes to communication, as Farfa has learned. Um, like I, I I'm just it's never been my strong suit ever. But I need a nice you guys way of to putting know, he ghosts me regularly, boys. But I need you to know <laughs> that I and not on purpose, not on purpose, so this isn't like a flex, like I don't feel good about this. I don't think I've ever ghosted anyone more than Sam on accident, on accident, <laughs> like purely on accident. Like, like, like he'll hit me up for something. And then it's just like, oh, OK, Sam wants to record something. I'll, I'll come back to that. And then I just never do. Like, I just, I just forget. And it's just like layers of that. But like I specifically like I gave him my number because I was like, hey, bro, I know myself. Blow my shit up. Like, if you need me and like event if i say i'm gonna be there i'll be there okay that's that is my thing it's hard to get me to commit to like you know showing up to some shit but when i do commit unless something fucking comes up i'll be there anyway uh that that's just like extending an olive branch to you farfa because uh i don't want you to think that i that i that i hate you i'm just a dumbass you know what i'm saying so do you want to work on a series together, perhaps involving like a wheel of sorts? And or... what what is the time? Like it's getting kind of late, isn't it? Like I think <laughs> I think I think it's time to I think it's time to go. <laughs> what we can do is we can like uh, put archetypes or like attributes and types on it, and then uh, do a duel based on what we hit. That can that could be a good idea. Dang, dang! I actually I've I've never thought of something like that. That's almost <laughs> like that's that's. That's almost like as creative as the people who like take decks off of Yu-Gi-Oh Pro and just like, hey, this this is my deck now. You know what I'm saying? We'll copy and paste. I was about to like throw that on over to Josh, but I think like he's the one that people are copying from. Yeah, that is true. Josh, have that you ever like lost? That is what I'll give credit. I'll give credit to you because like I, I have said a lot, like all oh, competitive players just like take what's best deck. And one thing that I give like credit to like Josh and Jesse and like people who are genuinely kind of like at the top is like it's other people who are looking to see what you guys say and that's why um i feel like you guys have like a lot of impact because if you say like you know how many paleozoic decks i've run into since you started your <laughs> fucking random shit bro like pretty consistently and i know how to play around it luckily because i've also played paleozoic not not on the same level as you but like I played it with like Slifer, Revive Sky God shit. Obviously. And I know. What is it with you and the God cards? Jesus. Sorry. Go on. <laughs> no, I told you. It, it, it's ingrained in like my upbringing. And, and they also have animations now. So it looks cool, bro. Me, me see pretty lights. 
Which, anyway. by the way, it's crazy how long it took for the Egyptian gods to get an animation. Anyway, go on. It is. No, you're, you're right. I, I, you're preaching to the choir there. But um, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, Paleozoic. I know, because whenever I get matched up with it, I'm just like, anytime you activate a trap, I'm just going to chain something because I know the only way you activate your Paleozoic is... Yeah, but like, I know that, but I know most people... Like, well, not most, but a lot of people don't know that in the matchup. Because whenever I played Paleozoic, and like I would activate something and then they didn't chain anything. And I'm like, and I know they have something that they could chain. And it's like, okay, I, you don't know the matchup. Yeah. Anyway, well, like the amount I, of times that someone would like Ash, uh, Opa Binia search or whatever. Yeah. 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 Like oh, man. you, you are the, and I bring that up to say, cause you, Jesse and like other people, like you, you are what a lot of like the competitive community community looks at because you guys have the results and like, you know, to, to kind of like back some of the things you're saying so that's why i think you guys control a lot more i think of the meta than maybe you think not all of it obviously people are going to play what's the best deck anyway but i do mm -hmm. think there's a good sector of people who are like oh if these guys think this then you know we would follow suit essentially yeah I Which is funny because I I often also just play uh I often also just play stuff because I like it like the paleo deck is not something that I'm playing because I think it's like a huge competitive meta call yeah. or anything like that yeah. you know it's just like I well it's competitive but it's not the best like it's it's fine that's cool I, I just yeah. play it because I like it that's cool it's Wait. not competitive <laughs> hey, come on let man. me ask a question to both of you and this is just like a fun little mental exercise yeah. if. If your pet deck, like let let's just say your pet deck is Paleozoic, and then Farfa, what's yours? What what would you say yours is? Gee, I don't know. Like, have you ever heard of the monster Farfa? Okay, Burning Abyss. Thank you. Calm down, bro. <laughs> Shit. Damn, can I ask a question? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> all right. The reason I bring that up, if you could, like, add what, like, you are working for Konami all of a sudden. You can make one card to support... A Link 1 monster that uses Dante Traveler of the Burning Abyss is a material that on summon sends a uh, Burning Abyss card from deck to the grave. Okay. All right. Oh, he was ready he was for ready. that. He was ready. I've been thinking about this for, for months and years Dude, at this point. You know point, what the yes. crazy but, thing but is? Also, I'm also ready. It, I can't say it that fast, but I'm also ready. Is it balanced, though? <laughs> like, do you think... Or does it need to be balanced? Because, like, I have something in mind for, like, Egyptian gods, but, like... I'm also trying to keep it in the vein of like what would be, I think maybe acceptable. Like that's not yeah, too yeah, fucking crazy. Of course. I mean, you go on like custom cards on like Pojo back in the day or Duelist Grounds when I was a kid, and you'd read like custom cards, and it would just be like, <laughs> "Me uh, play card, me win." Literally, like if this blue eyes monster <laughs> is summoned, uh, you win the game or something. Yeah. Right? Josh, what would yours be for Paleozoics that you think would like? Like yeah. support that engine would you even enough. Would make to a paleo, like... Josh? I feel like you'd make a custom frog or something. Uh no, I think I would make a paleo. Okay. At least that's the one I've thought about the most. Uh, but there's a, there's some stuff that I'm not certain how I would do it. But it would be a normal trap. Obviously, it would have the paleozoic effect in the graveyard where it can come back and all that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm just wondering. Like, I I know I want to give one sentence to it, and that's like similar to what they've given to labyrinth or multi-role which is after you activate it the opponent can't respond to your trap cards for the rest of the turn oh wow uh, that way they cannot chain block you paleo yeah. why are you laughing at like how is multi-role <laughs> the problem well okay first of all i thought you'd make an extra deck monster but then you just made like po po uh, paleo super poly or something how is that you are oh, not well, like the, the non-responsive aspect that's good. Hey, don't worry, Josh. No, no, the thing on, is, on, if, that's the, if that's the only effect you give it, it's not good enough because it does nothing yeah, yeah, on course. activation. Keep going, keep so, going. So, like, I'd give it, like, a, I'd give it, like, a random small effect like all of the Paleos have. Like, I don't know, maybe something they don't have yet, like banish a card from the opponent's graveyard or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's it. Like, I, I think that wouldn't be too powerful even. Like, I, I genuinely don't think that would even change that much. Yeah, but yeah. just something like I'm thinking one of the inherent problems is the chain blocking for paleos, right? And they I agree. They gave that they gave that to to striker with multi role. They gave that to labyrinth with uh, lovely. I don't see why paleo can't have it. Do you think? Uh, do you think a field spell could maybe help in some way? Well, I guess it it it's not a trap though. But like if there's a field spell that trapped. also says. Like, hey, you can't respond to trap activations. Maybe that, but it, it once again, it would also have to do something. Like, so at that point, yeah. like, if that's the only effect, you're not playing that because you just go yeah. minus one by putting that up. That is true. That is true. Like, it's, spell, it's interesting because, like, field spells inherently, like, 
I don't know. Like they're very good, but like yeah. at the same time, they're also like I don't know. They have to be very good in order for people to play them. You know. Do you play Mound of the Bound? No, but I do think <laughs> one one of my card ideas. Well, the main one is an extra deck like Link Summon for Egyptian God cards, but uh, but. I was also thinking, it, it just as he was saying the field spell thing, I was like, yeah, you're kind of fucking right. If they had a retrain Mound of the Bound that, like, just was on, like, that gimmick puppet fucking field spell level where it's just, like, you can't fucking touch my cards. You know what I mean? Like, that, I think it's more fitting for an Egyptian god. Like, that backup. gimmick puppet shit is going to be absolutely toxic, I think. Has that Dude. come out yet, by the way? No, no, not yet. Next, uh, next. Like set. in OCG, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not doing it much come over out there, is it? Yeah, I was it, gonna say, has it come it's out? It's has not it done really anything? doing anything in the best of three tournaments that they normally have. But I think someone topped their best of one YCS, the the big one, the eight thousand people one. Mm. Uh, it did top, but only one. It was like the because it's best it's of crazy. one. They just like said fuck it and uh, ran an FDK. And that is another thing because I've only played best of one from like Master Duel, so like. Mm -hmm. I think the scare, I, I use scare you loosely because obviously, you know, some people roll their eyes when they see fucking Egyptian God. But the scariest thing about a Winged Dragon of Raw deck is not a best of one format because it's like they don't know not to like play three cards. Like they don't know how to mm -hmm. play around it because they don't know what the yeah. fuck you have. But like one thing that I have like wondered is if people know to like, you know not do certain things or not play into certain things you know what i'm saying or not play shit in attack mode like yeah. how successful could i be with wing dragon of Rye? and I, I i've definitely thought about that like what i would side deck to like make sure i can you know either beat certain things because I, I i haven't had to deal with any of that so that's why I, yeah i would definitely go to like a nearby local in order yeah. to like get that experience before i go to like a big fucking ycs type event yeah it's definitely something to be aware of if your deck like relies maybe a little bit too much on that like unknown factor surprise factor right because that right. is something you might lose in a in a best of three but like if you in a, like is is like i don't know is like Ra like a blind second deck because you want to like sphere modem or ascent well it it changed a little bit when uh the horror shit came out but typically yeah because mm -hmm. especially in master duel because it's best of one like like yeah. they don't know i have raw i'm gonna you know surprise them with it and then just fucking win and and again like i it, it's done pretty well like i won a few games in master rank and i got up to like yeah I, I i always told myself i'll never go for master one i was like let me get to master one time and i did that and then like i actually got you know i like ranked up with it uh with wing dragon of raw horse and it was actually pretty decent the only yeah. issue is like there's obviously the fucking bricks um hmm. you know what i'm saying like there's oh boy ugh. there's a lot of them I mean, yeah, and uh, that, but that's what? why Tokusano Shinkyojin, that, uh, if you don't know what that is, that's the, um, trade in for 10, trade in for level 10s. Yep. And then I'm excited for, uh, Varudras to come mm -hmm. to Master Duel as well. I think that's going to be pretty cool. And then, uh, I just have a lot of like, and then since I'm playing Horus, I'm playing like normal trade in. So I, I have like a lot of draw, uh, a lot of draw power. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. anyway. Uh, my hypothetical yeah, fake card that doesn't exist that I would maybe throw in that I that I've been thinking of, but honestly, after Farfa said his, I was like, damn, I don't think mine's gonna be that good. <laughs> like that's fucking insane. <laughs> mine is a little more honest. Um, mine would be like a Link Three. That and the reason why it's a Link Three is because like I think in the nature of like three Egyptian God cards, three tribute. You know what I'm saying? It would yeah. be a Link Three that searches a divine beast. It like gives you an additional normal summon. And then you can summon over it, like, and use it as three tributes or whatever. So similar to Egyptian God Slime, except uh, a Link 3, maybe it's a little weaker. It doesn't have, like, the same effect, or maybe it's a little stronger, and it has a weaker effect. I don't know. Um, but something something along those lines, maybe it, like, grabs a Divine Beast, and it grabs a... Uh, you got to uh, give it an effect when it's tributed so that your opponent can't respond. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be good. And then for the rest of this turn, your opponent cannot. Yeah. That, now we're talking. There we go. Okay. I don't know about rest of Car turn, but far from the building. <laughs> Car designer far from the building. But then, like, God cards become a little more. It, this is also an issue. Like, I think all bricky cards, because God, 
Wait, wait, wait. If you thought Wing Dragon of Raw was a brick, wait till you hear my second favorite card of all time. Are you Sniper. ready? No. Horus the Black Flame Dragon level eight. Level eight. Okay. Damn. Yes. So like I because whenever that spell you get that card out, or something? that's the Omni, yeah. like, like the perma spell negate. Yeah. And okay. like you can just negate every spell. So it is really good. Even now, if you get it out, it's still a really good card. But it is extremely hard to get out, and it's a and it's just a brick. Like the level eight does nothing in your hand. I think I, I don't know how you guys feel about erratas. I and I don't expect them to ever errata this. Don't don't get me wrong. But like if when they if they had the foresight when they were coming out with these level eights, if it just had built in text that said, um, if this card's in your hand, you can place it at the bottom of your deck and then draw a card. Like that would <laughs> help so much. Just because then you never have to worry about it being a brick. You know what I'm saying? Because that's yeah. what always pisses me off. I will run one, one of level eight Horus, and that shit's always in my starting hand. Have you yeah. ever played Hearthstone? You know what that made me realize? I feel mm. like they've never done text changes to make a card better. I feel like it's always, yeah, it's to always to nerf text a card. changes to make a card worse, right? Yeah. In order to like bring it back from the ban list. I feel like I'd prefer the other way more. I'm actually curious in, I don't know if chat has any insight, but, or, or I mean, you guys are the fucking historians when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh typically but has there ever been a card that was eroded to improve the card because again coming from a Nick fighting game Valley. perspective they yeah, nerf they nerf characters all the t they nerf characters all the time in fighting games right yeah. Yeah. but they also buff characters all the time yeah. too you know mm, what i mean yeah. so like that's how you balance cards or that's how you balance characters so like i think the same principle should apply in cards but it's a little different because you physically own the card and now you're like oh I pulled this. I mean, Starlight, the same is true now for it's making not as a good card as, worse, though. That is true, and I think right? that's and why they, they don't like are, to errata shit. They are general. willing to do that. They don't do it very often, but they do it. Um, and I feel like that would be a relative. It, it'd be a more elegant solution because right now they have two two options. Right, you either make new cards that make the old cards like obsolete, right? You just don't play them anymore, mm -hmm. or you you force people to play the old cards because I don't know some of the cards mention exactly that card, uh, yeah. So people have to play them, but they get really mad when they draw them, right? Because they all, <laughs> obviously like it's Horus level eight, like from two thousand and four. It's not gonna yeah. do anything, right? right? And so uh, I feel like a, a a good middle way would be to like I don't know redesign the old card. Like I have, uh, a, I have a crazy hot take now. Like this one's an actual hot take. Okay, I think. And I don't know this for sure, but like, okay, let me let, let me segue this with a question. Dude, I am so pause champing right now. Come on, don't Bro, blue ball let me, me segue, like this. Let me segue this with a question. Do you think <laughs> that there will ever be a time when physical TCG kind of becomes the the uh, secondary to digital TCG, i.e., like Master Duel type Ooh. shit? And Maybe. I bring that up to say. I think their biggest issue, I don't think they want that because TCG prints money, obviously. So I don't think they want that business-wise. I don't think that's going to happen. But in the same vein that we were talking, when we were talking about erotaing, I think their biggest issue with erotaing a card yeah, is the absolutely. fact that people have these different variants of cards mm -hmm. in real life physically. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. if, like, say, say Master Duel was the standard and, like, when you go to a tournament it could still be in person it might be like pointless but like it could still be a cool in-person event where like you have like the visuals because like in a fighting game it's like one person's on one side of the table with a monitor and somebody's on the other side of the table with their monitor you know what i mean like it could still be a cool in real life event but i think they'd be much more willing to errata a card if like it would just universally change for every single person you know what i mean like in a master duel and it's yeah. almost more convenient that way in arguably maybe it's a hot take m like more uh more better better for the you know balance of the card game in general going forward i think Yu -Gi -Oh you know and card games in general are such a fundamental part of people's social aspects so i don't think it'll ever go away for that reason um, right but i love the idea of exploring um more like digital uh, centric things like um Balancing is is the best like example you gave, uh, but even like master duel exclusive cards, I think could work really well, because mm. um, yeah. there are certain things that you just can't do in real life. 
Um, I'm a big fan of Hearthstone, and there's like a card, a wacky card called like Puzzle Box of Yogg-Saron. Like you would not be able to replicate something dumb like that um, in in person, but like you could yeah. come up with like all these crazy funny things. Um, in, in would you play a Yu-Gi-Oh card that says with. cast 10 random spell cards? Imagine that, dude. That'd be insane. <laughs> what the fuck? Smashing ground That's what the thing does that, that, that you just mentioned. That's what that's it is, what yeah. That... In Hearthstone, they got cards like that. They just got, like, you know, add a random card to your hand that costs four mana. Or, like, uh, cast a random spell or cast four random spells or whatever. Like, they can, they, because in an online only game, you can do that, right? You have no way to do that in a, in what a paper. What type of boof ass game is that? <laughs> it's Yo, Josh, yeah, someone it's, just said, isn't that Runic Fountain? <laughs> that's crazy. Come on, man. <laughs> that is crazy. But, like, no, seriously, like, in, in, because, like, and then here's another question. Master Duel already has a different um, ban list than TCG, right? So mm -hmm. in a way, obviously not in a crazy way, but in a way it is its own game because like you can play cards in TCG that you can't play Master Duel or vice versa. Like you can play Maxi in Master Duel that you can't play in TCG. So with that in mind, because it's already essentially a different game, should they... Should they consider maybe eroding cards in Master Duel that has no effect on the TCG because it's its own universe anyway? You know what I mean? I don't my, know. I mean, I my personal opinion is the closer the two are together, the better. That's my personal. I agree. I, I agree. But I see it. Yeah. Uh, so that would move them further apart. So I wouldn't be a fan of that. I. Mm -hmm. But clearly, they don't want them to be the same. So I don't think it's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah, that's that was like I was wondering if it's in the realm of possibility. Like, I, I think can take... that they're trying to bring the games closer together, if anything, rather than further away, yeah. right? Because it just mm -hmm. act from a business perspective, it acts as like a you know, if you create this like symbiotic sort of ecosystem of Yu Gi Oh! the card game, people naturally feed into like, well, at home, I'm gonna like play Master Duel before bed. I'm gonna to go to my local card shop and play with my physical card. So you, you're you're always in that universe of Yu-Gi-Oh, and it just financially, I think, like makes sense for them. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I can tell from the card releases. It feels like things are getting really similar in a lot of ways between. Are you pro? And I think a lot of people are. Are you pro? Like get everything like TCG, Master Duel, OCG on the same like you know wave when it comes to ban yeah. list, uh, release schedule, mm -hmm. like all that. Because I know yes. some people are like trying to get that. Are you Josh? Uh, only if we get to keep the TCG ban list. Oh yeah, true. Only <laughs> only with no Maxi. What we didn't even want ask Maxi? you by the way. What do you think about that? You must love Fuck Maxi because your deck sounds like Fuck one. Nice. Okay, card. good. Okay. okay. You would have had to, if he said if he said he likes Maxi, you would have had to like scrap the entire no, that, thing. That, that you know, like, but like your deck sounds yeah. like is, twice. That, no. No. The reason I hate it is because. Because like, I think what you were about to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're about to say like, oh, you need it because you need like to be able to draw into like your raw and shit like that. Like, sure, it can help me, but nine times out of ten, I'm the blind second deck going, trying to like bring out Horus monsters or whatever the fuck I'm trying to do in that particular deck. So I'm already, I feel like, um, on an uphill battle, you know, whatever I'm about to do. My opponent has all this crazy shit already set up and then standby phase maxi. You know what I'm saying? Like, then it's like, okay, not only do I have to like beat this crazy board with my um, less than or, we'll yeah. just, rogue strategy, not only do I have to beat that, but I also have to like hope I don't play into like a Nibiru because he might draw into it if I play into this maxi. And mm -hmm. yeah, fuck that stupid ass card. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to see what Mulchummy does, uh, if anything. The Ooh, yeah. new Maxi. Do you, do you, okay, I have another question. Do you think do you think Mulchami Perelia means they want to ban Maxi, or do you think they are so delusional that they think there needs to be more copies of it? Because that's the two <laughs> more. There's no, there is no way how this can go. Like, there's no middle. There's no middle way here. It's either yeah, I'll say this, ban Maxi, which is the most based solution possible, or they for some reason think we need six copies. Like, there is no middle ground. It's, it's, it's if they don't ban Maxi when they release Mulchami. I yeah. like that is just a cartoon fucking like like I will take nothing they do seriously beyond that <laughs> point because like like that is That's literally I mean. their own universe. I agree. Like this needs to be this needs to be what like gets you know hypothetically TCG OCG like on yeah. the same track. Like 
yeah. this card comes out it's the band-aid for like all the sad ocg players who are like eh, i don't have maxine anymore like uh, but at least <laughs> i have more chummy like it, it can be that for them and then for tcg they get like you know the balanced maxi or whatever yeah. and then master duel the same people who are enthusiasts for maxi it'll be the same you know response as the ocg like and those enthusiasts need to go by the way like that card even the people who play <laughs> it need to go bro <laughs> even Fire the people them. who play it because like the people the people who play it because like because and josh honestly you made a good point earlier when you were like i'm just gonna play whatever's the best like um deck or whatever or the best cards it doesn't matter what it is like even if it's like i'm regretfully playing this then mm -hmm. you know then i'll play it the only card i agree with you when it comes to that is maxi like there's been times that i've tried to just like like oh i hate the card so much so i'm just not gonna play it but then like mm -hmm. i get cooked by it so much that it's like fuck the world i'm playing maxi and like i need i need to feel something too so like i <laughs> i get you on that i get you on that yeah. i hate that card though yeah. i do hate that card yeah. to answer your question fuck that card and we're getting close to that moment because the card's actually already out in the OCG and uh, they're getting it because they have set ban list dates for the OCG. They are getting a new ban list for July 1st, I think. That's Imagine. not too long from now. Cat. Imagine. So that is, the, that is going to be the first ban list update after Molchami release. So that's where we're gonna, when we're going to find out whether they are completely insane or actually trying to replace it. Bro, that's... that's a we're gonna find out. A set I, 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 I'm I'm optimistic enough to think that it's 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 the right move. Like they're they're gonna they're gonna ban Maxi and then this is the fix. Like I don't think I don't see any other reason for them to even print that card other than that. But that's that's the only if, thing that's making me believe that because I cannot I cannot even like wrap fathom. my head around yeah. the the like a possibility that they for some reason are not going to hit maxi but they also think we need more copies of it like that's just something i <laughs> But the question is do you do you and it might be a stupid question because maybe it's like an obvious yet yes do you play all six like in that hypothetical because then uh, it's like well, I you think can the kind of specific like the, the the whole point of Molchami is that it's not as good as well. Like it's it's yeah. like pseudo replacement. It's not as good, and currently it's not being played as much in the OCG. Yeah, it's yeah, already yeah. out. They're I not the main. I definitely all six. read it when it came out, but do you off the top of your head remember the restriction? I know it like says yeah, you, have you have to have no any other. You have oh to yeah, have you no can cards. control no cards. So none of that. So it's oh like, yeah. So if I go second, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but it also doesn't draw for every friend. special summon. It only draws for summons from hand. From the hand, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh, instead of drawing like 20 cards if your opponent full combos, it draws you like, I don't know, depending on the deck. It, oh, and it cooks like flu because it's normal summons as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so good. It's, like, it's much more Fuck reasonable because it's it's only good going second is when you really need the help. And it gives right. you like, instead of giving you 20 cards, which is an auto win, it gives you like two to three, which is just a solid boost to going second. Right? Because that's, that's, that's what, like, that's, what people, um, that's what people like argue for. Like the people who are pro maxi won their cycle yeah. pass, but like, their only valid-ish <laughs> point is the idea that, um, like, going second needs help. Sure. Like, yeah. I got you. But Maxi yeah. is unfortunately... Kind of it's Yeah, it's a crazy solution, but it also is the solution for whoever's going first as well. So that's the, yeah. that's the fucking in, inherent issue that Mulchummy fixes. So... Yeah, so TLDR, Maxi is not, uh, uh, Molchami is not as popular in the OCG as Maxi is at the moment. As but it I should would be. argue like, that's it should how be a it thought should process. Be. Like, yeah, they shouldn't yeah. replace Maxi with another card that is as ubiquitous and as powerful. They should be making as universally closer. like, yes, I need yeah. this at three in every single deck in my, yeah. you know, in my repertoire. Yeah, whether I'm going first or second, or if I'm playing against this or that deck, like it doesn't even matter for Maxi. Mm -hmm. It's good always, pretty much, except for like specifically stun or flu. Mm -hmm. um whereas molchami is like more like okay well maybe in some formats you'd main deck it in some formats you'd cite it in some formats you wouldn't water, play it right? at all which is much better card design it's a water um, card right it's it's a water yeah water yeah it is water. okay jeez I, i'm excited for that card i do want us to get on the same release schedule because I, I i do hate the I've, I've used the word hate a lot i've realized i do dislike <laughs> the uh like Oh, how is this doing over here? So I can like, like I want to try it yeah. myself, bro. Like, yeah, honestly, like it, it takes a lot of excitement away, especially when like uh, new stuff comes out that you want to cook with, but then like the OCG has already figured it out for like three months. Yeah, but and deck lists have already been solved and stuff. It's uh, it's the rough. only thing. 
that is like somewhat be not beneficial but like that kind of keeps the suspense is because of the fact that ocg has a different uh ban list so it's like the impact that it has on the ocg could be vastly different specifically that, because of maxi you know what i mean that is often the case like often things perform here that didn't perform there and vice versa yeah so i guess in a way like if we had separate release schedules but the same ban list and card pool then it would also like that wouldn't really work right like yeah yeah, I, I, I do agree. Like, the more we've talked, I do agree. Like, everything should get on the same um, ban list, release schedule, all that. It should just be synergistically, like, just Yu-Gi-Oh! And then this is what it is. You know what I mean? I would like that. I, I would yeah. prefer that. But that I, would be uh, I was going to do some uh, quick-fire uh, Q&A here before we wrap off. Um, this is a bit of a, a bit of a longer podcast, but it's always good to just have, you know, guests like you, especially uh, who the community probably doesn't get like a direct uh, link to quite often. So it's it's awesome to have you and get your thoughts and um, hey, share Glad your perspectives. Be it's been a, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, so questions in chat. Honestly, the first like good one that I uh, or, or that I managed to pick out here, at least quick one. Uh, who would win, um, Goku or Ra? Hmm. Man, I, I I hate to say it because I like I, I do like Wing Dragon of Ra more than even Goku probably. Ooh. Now if you said go if you said Vegeta or either way, Goku's winning. Goku's winning. I don't know why I acted like I thought about it. Goku can <laughs> in just the brief explanation, like when Goku was a genuine child, like twelve years old, like he was on the same level as people who were like blowing up the moon entirely. So you know you scale that up to him being a grown man fighting gods and like almost blowing up the universe on accident like stupid shit like that like yeah goku goku is uh unfortunately um beating the shit out of raw unfortunately are you uh <laughs> are you into all of those like um like power scaling like science i used to be more like i never did it like as content but like i i'm like uh what's the word not like friends but uh acquaintances with like some people who are in that sphere like how you have to make uh, sure that they know that you're not their friend <laughs> they are not my friend <laughs> well, well because like I'm, I'm very particular with like who i label as a friend because then you know that, that that's another level for me you know what i'm saying yeah. like i gotta i gotta be there for you i don't want to have to, you know what i'm saying like if you're like don't count on me like i don't know you that well bro like Anyway, when are you promoting continue. sam to They're friends you for a trident dragon right which you know? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> hey man there's a few you can ask you're not gonna receive that shit i did that, i do think that lore is funny i don't know why they just didn't re-release re trident dragon but whatever yeah <laughs> asking the big questions here today apparently yeah all right um uh needs no introduction but if you are for some reason unacquainted with uh Siri X, uh, various social media links will be in the description down below. So feel free to check them out on YouTube. Uh, I believe you're also on Twitter as well. If people want to follow your um, NBA takes, I want to say, like you've been posting a lot about sports. And I've, well, I'm, it's, I, just, I it's, it's just the finals of the of basketball right now. And that's yeah, like sports the one balls sport going on that I'm hot into. over there. Yeah, lots of sports. I'm not like a on. sport head. I'm just like just basketball. Like that's <laughs> and it's about to end anyway. So um yeah so uh we've actually queued up quite a lot of other guests as well so um we are uh on a hot streak here leading up to national season but do tune in closer to info i believe we'll be doing a big uh set deep dive as well for those of you who want to be a little bit more focused on the tcg but as always uh, it's been a real pleasure thank you so much for being here uh once again siriax and josh for uh being the co-host and uh yeah, we'll see yeah, you. Josh, you can episode. be co-host again, bro. Thank you. Thank you for having me, bro. Nice. I'm making fun. my comeback as a co-host <laughs> next time. It was a pleasure to have you. I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. And uh, yeah, signing out. Goodbye.